Welcome back to In Focus. The Department of Justice announced on Tuesday that it has reached a settlement agreement with Facebook's parent company, Meta. This after the tech giant was accused of discriminatory advertising on its social media platforms. You might recall back in 2018, the Department of Housing and Urban Development filed a lawsuit against Meta, alleging that the platform's housing advertising system that was previously called the Special Ad or Lookalike audience discriminated against users' race, color, religion, sex, nationality, etc. According to the settlement now, an agreement, Meta has promised to build a new ad targeting system that is not discriminatory, and they have until December 31st to do so. Joining me now with a legal perspective is criminal defense attorney and anchor at Law and Crime Network, Bob Bianchi. Bob, thank you for being with me. So the DOJ just settled this, this lawsuit with Facebook. Uh, I know that you've been keeping up with this lawsuit. What do you make of this, uh, of this decision? Was there actually a discriminatory algorithm uh, in your estimation? Well, you know, that's a little hard to answer from a lawyer's point of view. It seems like the experts that review these things uh, made a determination, and Meta seems to have agreed with it, that it allowed advertisers to be focusing advertisement based on protected classes under the law, race, of religion, national origin, sex, for example, and that these advertisers, therefore, were focusing on certain protected classes, and therefore, it was unconstitutional. That was the argument that DOJ was making. Uh, when you get the algorithms and the science of it, Addison, I'm not going to lie to you, I really don't know how those things work. That's way above my pay grade. But I, I kind of suspect that Meta would not have done this monumental settlement agreement if they did not feel that there was something to the DOJ's complaint because it really, uh, it's the first time Meta has ever done this and it sets a precedent. So it's a big case. Yeah, that's usually, I feel like that's usually what happens when uh, people end up settling. Usually it's because they just don't want to put up with the headache or sometimes it's just so they can, they can uh, get rid of the issue altogether so they don't have to worry about it because there might be something laying beneath the surface that they're, that they're hiding. And I, I want to get your thoughts on this because this is starting to, to gain a lot of traction. Uh, Tesla employees, former Tesla employees rather, have filed a lawsuit against the company and against CEO Elon Musk for mass layoffs. I know in Nevada, uh, they laid off about 500 employees uh, at their at the headquarters there, um, and so they they're suing for these layoffs now. Elon Musk, there you remember that leaked email where he said that uh, it was a tough quarterly report for Tesla. So naturally, when that happens, when things are getting tighter and we have record inflation, uh, this is the consequence of some companies they have to let go of some employees. So maybe the employees should take this up with uh, with President Biden and not uh, Elon Musk, because this was just a response to bad policy. Well, I guess they could do both. Um, yeah. File the lawsuit and speak to the president uh, about it. But in, in this particular instance, what they're alleging is that there is a federal law that prevents these kind of massive layoffs without 60 days notice. Um, so this is a very statutory case right here. The law either supports their position that they should have been given that notice beforehand or not. So it's a pretty clear cut uh, case as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, a lot of times, Addison, we get into a situation where we talk legalities on one side and politics on the other side, but nothing says that we can't try to accomplish the right thing or get to the right place by utilizing both the law and the politicians, either to change the law or to do what it needs to be done to curb whatever harm or ill occurred to a particular group of people. Yeah, yeah, and and speaking of Tesla, uh, there was a former Tesla worker who rejected a $15 million payout According to a San Francisco court filing, this was over a, a race abuse lawsuit from Yahoo News. It says Owen Diaz, former Tesla elevator operator, rejected a $15 million payout, which was awarded after he filed a racial abuse lawsuit. Lawyers for Diaz turned down the payout in a filing of federal court San Francisco. They said they believed the award was unjust and the payout was not enough to deter further racial abuse at Tesla. So he rejected $15 million, Bob. Addison, this has got a really strange and tortured procedural history in my mind. They went before a jury. A jury came back and awarded both compensatory and punitive damages. I think it was to the tune of $137 million, 
What a lot of people aren't getting about the story is that what happens in a lot of cases is you go before a court on a verdict like that afterwards and you say that the, the verdict was excessive, that the jury was out of control. And the judge in this particular case actually reduced that award to the $15 million and said, listen, you either take the $15 million or if you don't want the $15 million, then you're going to have to go back to trial denying him the right to appeal the judge reducing the award in the first place. So it's very clunky procedural here, but uh, history here. But I think, Addison, the point that you'd like to raise is we have gotten out of control with regard to these verdicts. I'm not saying what happened to the gentleman was the right thing or the wrong mm -hmm. thing. The jury made a conclusion that it was not the right thing. But the question becomes, is $137 million, or in this case, $15 million by way of a settlement, not enough to compensate somebody for that harm? Uh, this is where the rule of reason, I like to say, Addison, has gotten out of control. Yes, we should be able to sue companies. Yes, they should be able to compensate people if they've been discriminated upon or what have you. But you can't crush a company with an excessive verdict mm -hmm. or an excessive settlement like this. $15 million, in my estimation, is quite a bit of money for what was alleged to have happened to this gentleman. Yeah, and what they allege is is that uh, some workers, some colleagues were verbally abusing him, once telling him to, to go back to Africa. Obviously, that's not okay, uh, and he took issue with it, and he filed this lawsuit. They offered him $15 million. Um, I don't know why you would not take that, especially you, you're getting $15 million because someone used a racial slur at you or said something racially insensitive maybe towards you. And uh, if, if someone did that to me, if someone call, called me a cracker uh, in, in my workplace and I was offered $15 million to leave it alone, <laughs> I would do it for $150. I'm going to be honest with you. You give me $150, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but that's just me. Bob, we are out of time. Thank you for being on the show, breaking all of this down from a lawyer's perspective. I appreciate it. Of course.